So I'm Mark Osters. I head up engineering. And, and so I want to go through a couple of things that are really exciting that's going on with RDAP. Who here uses RDAP? <laughs> Who has gone to the new Aaron search page? You've used RDAP. <laughs> so, okay, who, who uh, another question. It, this is a little bit longer in the presentation, but I'll go through it now. Who, who goes to the whois.aaron.net? Do you like that better than search.aaron.net? Go ahead and take a look and uh, tell me what you think. So anyways, uh, oh, I just did a bad thing. Okay, so let's go and talk about uh, RDAP and what it, what it is. So basically, uh, it's, it's, it's a, one of the things that we've done, and this has been an age-old dream of mine, is uh, we're current, who is, is a really, really, really old specification. It is about as old as the first RFC that came out uh, in 1969. Which, incidentally, I was a little kid then, and I didn't care about the internet. Um, and many of you probably weren't born during that time. So um, this is a, a, a sort of a bootstrap into taking this protocol and actually modernizing it. So this is something that uh, Andy Newton, in particular, has been working on for a number of years. Our first foray at Aaron was actually this uh, RESTful service called Who is RWS, which I know many of you have used as well. And uh, th the next part of this was actually bringing it into the IETF and creating a standard dealing with this. And it supports, supports both domain name registries as well as internet registries. So here's kind of how it looks, right? You have your, uh, you basically your common data types, data structures dealing with it, object classes, because we, we like using object-oriented sort of things, and you get your search results. So all, all, all engineers, all developers really like this uh, new framework. The old who is was, okay, I'm gonna ask a question, and I hope I get an answer, and if I do, is in this unstructured data format that I need to actually parse. So this is a much better way of actually dealing with this and, and, and a more sort of um, methodical way. Another thing about who is, is really your, your client, uh, you may use J who is if, for example, if you're on a Linux box, and J who is has a bunch of hints in there saying, hey, I'm asking for this particular IP address. Where do I go? And many of you actually come to Aaron first, um, saying, hey, I want to know about an IP address in uh, 193.8, which is in RIPE's region. But you would first come to us, and we would redirect you to, to RIPE's who is server. Um, well, who is is just not that smart. It just goes one certain place and, and goes on. Or it may have some hints in there saying, well, the com registry is over here, the org registry is over there, and I know which server to go to. Well, with RDAP, you don't have that problem. You use this concept called bootstrapping, where ICANN actually stores who has what, who has these TLDs, and who has these IP addresses. And here you can see the concept of, hey, I'm asking for a particular IP address. Um, it comes back and says, well, ask Aaron about it. You ask Aaron, and it says, well, we actually uh, gave that space to APNIC, um, and APNIC is now coming back with the right information. All this stuff is seamless to end users. So let's talk, we've, you've seen this, you've heard this before. Let's talk about updates since Aaron 41. So one of the things that we haven't been dealing with is flat name spaces like names. And this is something that um, has been in the ITF and has been worked on and is dealing with the object tags. And there's now a way of actually figuring out which registry has the contacts and you can go ahead and ask them. There's also some adopted work that's going on. One is federated authentication with OpenID. This is something that Aaron Engineering has been working on uh, for a period of time as well, to have on a, on a, un, uh, basically allows you to have more results um, if you're authenticated. Uh, right now you're capped at 256 entries. Um, this way you can get more than that. Um, you have paging and sorting of results, reverse searches, and under discussion is a JCard replacement. JCard is a specification on dealing with users and how users in their postal addresses are supposed to be. Different users in different areas of the world have different ways of looking at, at both names as well as the location where to send their mail. 
And uh, JCARD really doesn't specify this very well, so this is something that's being looked at. And it's actually been exposed within the regional registries and that people want to see the same information no matter which uh, region of the world that you're going to. Um, there's some other things going on with RDAP mirroring, so you can actually mirror, much like you can with uh, IRR data, you can actually mirror RDAP data at a different registry. So uh, here's object tagging, you can see that uh, these uh, particular object tags are known for, for, uh, for the regional registries. And here's uh, work that's un going underway with uh, RDAP mirroring, which is uh, something that APNIC is uh, going for right now. So RDAP alignment, there's, uh, the regional registries have been working together on making sure that all the things, all our behaviors are very common and very similar. So we had 16 items that we identified at a recent uh, uh, meeting at the ITF where the regional registry uh, technical people got together and said, okay, we have these short-term things that we need to fix, medium-term and longer-term. And uh, we met together in Prague, and I'm happy to say that uh, the near-term and medium-term things we're actually going to have all done by the end of the year. Incidentally, Aaron doesn't have any uh, near-term or medium-term issues to deal with. So the other regions, regional registries have some implementation things that they need to fix. So um, another thing that's going on, and I'm going through this fairly fast, is, um, is that we've added on a bunch of enhancements with RDAP. Um, for example, you can query an AS and see all the associated networks underneath it. Uh, and, and you can also use uh, CIDR uh, searches as well. Uh, we also, as I mentioned before, our new unified search site, which is search.aaron.net, uh, uses RDAP as its search tool. It's no longer using Whois. So, and that's interesting because uh, when we were talking about the website update, everything now is based on RESTful services. Um, so you have this nice GUI on the front side, but on the back side it's all RESTful. And that includes RDAP. And here you can see a, a specialized search uh, page that we have for RDAP. So you can actually drill down to particular objects that you want to take a look at. You can actually use this tool, much like you can use the advanced search tool on the whois.aaron.net site. And of course, uh, for, for people who, who like whois, the old UI is still there. I'm not sure for how long, so this is a time-limited offer. You can go ahead and use the old site um, for a while, at least, uh, but it is there for, for you to use. Um, we also created new documentation for you guys to start discovering this and how to, how to use RDAP. Um, it has a, a number of cool sort of features that you can actually code against. And what's really wonderful about this is you can go across either, all the regional registries, especially after we got these near-term and medium-term issues taken care of. You can do the same coding on all th five regional registries. So now let's go on and move on to ICANN. So, RDAP was a very, very big topic at the most recent ICANN meeting. Why? GDPR. So who, who here, is anyone here actually run a domain registry? Okay, did you turn off all the personal um, information or you still have it available? We've been by default private. For Pro okay, so if you, if you use who is, and you, before you can normally go and say, hey, who has um, Aaron.net? Um, actually, I'm not sure if this is uh, privacy enhanced or not. But um, like on my personal domain, for example, um, there's no information w about it at all. You have to go to the registry, the registrar, to find out who has uh, the contact information. It's no longer uh, used in the general purpose um, in the general internet like it was before. Before you can actually go from my personal domain and you can actually see that, hey, I'm a tech and admin contact for my own domain. Um, that is no longer possible. And the reason for this is, uh, is GDPR. And, and ICANN really, really wants to actually satisfy all the needs of their constituencies, including law enforcement and intellectual property rights people. And they like to see some uh, better exposure than they have today. So, so uh, this is something ICANN looked at RDAP and said, hey, this could be 
with this access control features that it has with the OpenID stuff that I mentioned earlier, this could be a really cool way of actually exposing information to all authenticated users so that you can get some sort of uh, 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 information back um, without um, having to go through additional hoops. So uh, one of the things that ICANN has done is they put it in their contracts that all registries and registrars need to have RDAP implemented in six months. Um, and that's, I believe, this coming um, August, uh, if not sooner. So, so there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done here to make RDAP actually happen, but it is occurring. So, so one of the things that uh, the, um, the CEO of ICANN said is, I want to create a technical services group that actually deal with RDAP in our community and make this happen. And you can see this group of people here, and you may have noticed that uh, the chief engineer for, for uh, Aaron is actually in the front. Um, and that's Andy Newton. He was, he was at, uh, at ICANN 64 and actually grappling with these issues. So it, again, it's very much in the forefront. Uh, this is really, really big. And I'm excited about it because I, like I, I really like to see who has go away um, and actually replaced by RDAP. And ICANN is actually helping put that into place as well. So in here you can see this uh, DNR stands for Domain Name Registries. And you can see since uh, Aaron 41 to 43 that we have a lot more TLDs that are actually uh, serving up RDAP. And, and uh, so this is great seeing this core protocol, who is, being replaced by a newer core protocol called RDAP. So with that, any questions? Hi, Kathy Aronson. I don't, I don't have a question. I just have a mini speech. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I am so excited for you because almost the entire time I've known you, you've wanted who is to go away, and this is just awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, so uh, just a little forefront, who, who you here uses our who is? You retired it. Great. So I, I helped create our who is as a replacement to who is, and it didn't make it. <laughs> this one, I hope, will. In fact, it will. So, so I'm excited about our, our who is going away as well, even though it's one of my babies. OK, that's Joe. Uh, Jason Schiller, Google. Do we have full one-to-one -one support for all the existing who is flags, query by record type, network, ASN, POC, or customer, query by attribute, domain name, handle name, display flags? Da, 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 da. I, I believe a good number of them are there, if not all of them. Uh, there's a full, uh, admittedly, who is RWS actually has some more features than RDAP does because it, uh, RDAP is actually a standardized protocol, whereas uh, who is RWS has more things that you can actually do uh, queries based, hey, show me all the prefixes shorter than this length, that sort of thing. That's not in RDAP. Okay. So, uh, but most of those m major queries are there. He's still typing. Oh. Is this Jason? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll come back. Okay, thank you. Michael Castaval Naralo. Uh, I have a technical question. What prevents man in the middle from the bootstrap servers to the end registries in case of uh, state-sponsored censorship or so forth, uh, or similar use cases? Uh, is there cryptography keys or yeah. something to the KSK? Uh, so there's, um, it, all this done is done over HTTPS transport, uh, so they need to have a cert associated with that, uh, that's um, validated. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And we're gonna close the mic shortly, so if you have a question, remote or present, please get to the mics. Waiting for the text to res in. <laughs> As the packets coalesce on your screen. Jason Schiller, Google. Can we make sure we have full one-to-one -one support and how to manufacture the queries prior to killing who is? Uh, I, that's a certainly a, a very valid request. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Andrew. We got the last. Uh, Andrew Dahl, I just noticed that there are differences in um, being able to substring search by um, substring search on like name records. Um, doesn't seem to, I haven't figured out how to do it in RDAP yet. Maybe that's my issue, but um, if you just wanna throw a substring search in for a part of a company name, 
um, doesn't always seem to return the same things between Reg RWS and um, RDAP. Yeah. So maybe uh, you we can uh, sit together and go through some of this a little bit later. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. Hey, you're welcome.